Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to Unconstructed Bible Talk here um, where we just bring the word in a life applicable way in conversation. So we're just so glad to have everybody join us this evening and welcome pastor and welcome Minister Knox. Great to see you as always and hope that this week has been wonderful for you. With the exception of these ice cold temperatures this evening, <laughs> definitely a little bit, oh. a little bit brisk. <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit, just yeah. a little bit. Well, one good thing about it, it will kill off some of the germs, yeah, and some of the critters because Ooh. it is very cold out there. So we do get some benefits, yeah. Yep. From the cooler Absolutely. weather. Yeah. Yeah. So everybody hopefully is, um, as you were saying a little earlier, Pastor, um, letting those faucets drip. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yep. yes. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. And so we, we're going to jump right into our conversation uh, this evening. And um, Pastor, you, you, you brought a dynamic message Sunday, and um, you said the uh, it, it, his name is Jesus. What's in a name? His name is Jesus. <laughs> so I always love to get some of that backdrop as to you know what God, you know how you develop getting to that point of bringing the message on Sunday. You know, uh, so please, please share this evening. Well, there were a couple of things. One is um, I, I'm doing something that I haven't done a whole lot, but I'm, I'm using the lectionary to actually pull scriptures from to um, develop the message with. And um, this week was, well, this past Sunday was uh, from the gospel according to John. And when you research John, the one thing John does is, well, I wouldn't say the one thing, but the main thing he does is he wants people to understand, uh, to believe, first of all, that Jesus is the Messiah and to um, believe and understand that Jesus is the Son of God. And also, he wants people to understand the benefits of believing in Jesus Christ and um, having faith in Jesus. So that led me to, um, and then as I read from the Voice Bible, uh, I like the way it, in, in uh, verse 48, I believe it was, he said that, uh, you know, in verse 45, where Philip was talking to Nathaniel and uh, one of the quotes was that uh, Philip said his name is Jesus. Mm -hmm. And then as I did that and began to research, when I ran across the article that said there were over a million people who do not know Jesus, then that heightened the need to uh, deliver that message. Um, and then you know, a little bit further into my uh, uh, um, research, where it said that about 50% of adults believe that Jesus was um, a great teacher, but was not really the Son of God. So those things uh, stood out to me and helped me to... Uh, help my desire to bring that message and to uh, entitle it uh, the way it was titled. Well, you know, you said something that I, I wanted to kind of go back and just for the sake of those that may not know exactly what a lectionary is. What mm -hmm. is a lectionary? Uh, well, a lectionary is um, from the Methodist point of view, they will give you a year of uh, uh, passages of scripture um, and you'll have uh, the Old Testament you'll have the New Testament and then you'll have the epistle reading 
um, along with the uh, uh, proposed him for that Sunday. So the, that is what a lectionary is, is actually a compilation of uh, uh, passages of scripture for each Sunday of the year. That sounds good. And then the reference you made with the fact that statistically, there are a million people who have not been introduced to or know about who Christ is. And, and, and I want to kind of go a little bit deeper there with the importance of the why that was an important statistic for, for you when you heard it um, based on what we're supposed to do or, you know, how, what made that an important statistic that it just went, whoo, that's, that's big. Well, the, the thing to, there are a number of things, but the one thing that really stood out to me is that if we truly, first of all, we are called to uh, to proclaim the gospel, the good news of the gospel, which is uh, Jesus Christ. So that that's our calling as Methodists. Uh, and I know folks will say, well, the Methodist is uh, kind of splitting up, but it's still... I don't care which branch of the Methodist you're you you're involved with, the the call is still the same. The call is from Matthew 28 and 20, where Jesus said, "Go to you therefore and make disciples." So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're Baptist. It doesn't matter where you are when you fit in the denomination thing. Because, and I'll say this: denomination is man-made. I agree. God, um, God is God. So. The, yes. the, the call is to go and make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. And that transformation thing stands out. Because <laughs> if we truly have a relationship with God, and we have a true relationship with God through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, then this world would be a much better place. Yes, uh, We would learn how to treat each other better. We would learn how to love each other better. We would learn how uh, we are all created in the image of God, and all of this divisiveness uh, could be put aside if we truly uh, develop our relationship with Jesus and allow him to develop his relationship with us. So it's just very important. And, and then the other part of it is, too, uh, without Jesus, there's no salvation. None. So that's imperative. Um, and then the other thing is, uh, and like I said, there's many things. Uh, to be forgiven of our sins, we are only forgiven to, of our sins through the blood of Jesus Christ, the sacrificial lamb. And I, and I think a lot of people overlook that. Uh, but we, we can only be put in right relationship by the ultimate sacrifice, who is indeed Jesus Christ. And the fact that he was willing to give up his seat in glory, come down, live among us sinful people, take on our sinful, uh, the, the sins that we committed that he did not commit, but be willing to die so that we could be forgiven of our sins. Mm -hmm. And we don't give that enough thought. Uh, so, you know, we, we need to think of and be appreciative of what Jesus has done for us. Yes. Yes, yes. That that part of the appreciation for the act of compassion, empathy, um, and grace that he's given us from that one act of um, God giving his only son as the sacrifice so mm -hmm. that we may be, we now have this opportunity as a result of of that so based on that when you say you know um his name is jesus there's power mm -hmm. there's power in his name there is power you know in understanding who he is um and so i was very grateful for the message uh sunday i i took quite a Notes myself as I sat there 
and uh and and brother i saw also you were taking some copious notes as well so how did the message hit you on sunday and and what were some of the things that stood out to you one of the biggest things that he said was that when uh nathaniel asked um jesus how did he know him and he said that uh uh, and he went to the describe, I knew you, and and you were under the fig tree. He named everything. And that was um, where we are. Um, that particular key verse is what people need to happen now in order to for their eyes to be to be wide open, uh, to take someone and to go back and and draw everything that they have said and done to that moment. Um, that's what opened people's eyes. That's what opened Nathaniel's eyes. And that's, that's what's going to open people's eyes today. Even though we can't do what Jesus did, but we can stand in the gap and speak on our own testimony where God has brought us and what God has done for us, and to allow that to speak to the people that are around us. But like I said, you got so many now, even though um, Pastor talked about those that don't know Christ, well, we have those, and I don't know what the percentage is, that do know Christ, but choose not to speak his name. You know, they'll say just about anything else, yeah, higher power, uh, 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 supreme being. They'll name all these things right. instead of saying God. And yeah. um, those two need to have their eyes open. Yes, yes. Because and be, he, yes. And be he introduced to him yes. again. Yes. Yes. And the word Pastor used Sunday, as you were just saying, that came back to my memory. I have it here in the notes where it says, we are called to hastily tell the good news of who Christ is. Not with the slowfulness or as you were saying, beating around the bush, supreme being, higher calling. It's a vibe. What's a vibe? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Jesus is a vibe? Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Those type of things to just kind of bring him back to a common level down. It's almost like wiping out the deity of who Christ is. It's not mm. right. Mm. And it won't be acceptable when it's your time to be standing before. It won't be acceptable. He's very, he's made it very clear. I am God and God alone. Yes. And, um, so, yeah, just trying to wake people up, uh, just like it's those that have never heard his name before, mm -hmm. waiting to be to hear your testimony. Those that have heard his name and just um, chose not to call it, those are just as important to be introduced to God again in the true light of who God is. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that was one of the things that stood out when he spoke of that, you know, God knew us before we were born. And so that when we communicate with him, he knows all about us. Yes, yes. And I was looking at something um, today, Pastor, where we're just talking about the importance, especially in the Jewish faith, about choosing a name that kind of governs and, and, and almost embraces the character you know, of that, of that person. And so when you say his name is Jesus, when you say, you know, his name is John, when you say you're saying you're putting an emphasis on the, the character, you know, of, of, of that, of that person. And then you went on to talk about um, when Jesus changed Simon's name. Again, back to the importance of of the name, you want to kind of elaborate a little bit about the importance of that? 
Well, yeah, again, uh, reading the Voice Bible, I have been various uh, versions of the Bible, but the Voice Bible stood out, and it said, it, the way it read was that Jesus looked into Simon. And when he looked into Simon is when he changed his name. When he, when he, when he says, you know, I know your daddy. <laughs> it's a paraphrase. I know your daddy. I know who your daddy is. And, and and but I also have seen you and I looked into you and I know I know more about you than you know about yourself. Yes. So rather than your name being Simon, your name will now be Peter, which is the rock. And um, another version of it says that he did that after Simon, he asked the disciples, uh, this is from the uh, Synoptic Gospels, where he asked the disciples, well, who do you say that I am? Mm -hmm. And uh, in the Synoptic Gospels, it said, one, one, they said, well, some say that, that, that you are... Um, that you are one of the disciples and some say that you are, are, are this person and that person uh, just kind of paraphrasing it uh, and Jesus said but who do you say that I am and Simon spoke up and said you are the Christ the son of the living God and Jesus said to him flesh and blood did not reveal this to you my father in heaven so as that's revealed to you, your name will no longer be Simon. It will now be Peter, the rock. And upon, upon this, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail. Now, people sometimes get it mixed up, mixed up is because they think that Jesus is saying that he's going to build his church upon Peter. Mm -hmm. But no, he's saying that the church is being built up on the confession that Peter made about who he was. Or who he is, not was, but who he is. So uh, Jesus has the ability to change our name. Jesus looks into us, as Brother uh, Knox said, you know, he told Nathaniel, I saw you sitting up under the tree. In other words, I know all about you. I know you. I, I knew you. I saw you when you were eating fruit off the tree. Yeah. Now, I don't know what kind of fruit. He was eating figs, but we eat various kinds of fruit from trees right. too. So I, as as right. I mentioned in the in the message Sunday, what kind of tree are you sitting on? Mm -hmm. It doesn't really matter what type of tree. It could be a tree of shame. It could be a, a tree of, right. of 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 something you've done that you're ashamed of, or something that you said. Yeah. It yeah. doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Jesus still sees you. He still looks into you, and he still sees worth and value in you. Something yes. that other people may not see or refuse to see, but he sees it and he can take whatever he sees in you and bring it to the forefront mm -hmm. and change your name, mm -hmm. change your, um, as I said, Sonny, your career. He yes. can change your future. Yes. Yes. <laughs> he has that ability. Yes. He can shift you. He can shift your position in life, yeah. Yeah. just like that. Yeah. Just like that. But you, the thing that you said, I think that stands out, is that the rock was built on Peter taking and Peter surrendering and being obedient to acknowledge who. Yeah. Back to what you were talking about, um, uh, brother, about. People saying, oh, the universe is this and screaming yep. this. And, you know, yep. I, I, I take that part of the Bible, but I don't believe this. Or I do, you, just playing a, pu a, a, a puzzle yeah. with what parts work and what parts they don't want versus standing firm, believing, trusting in spite of the mm -hmm. consequences. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And you got so many people, and uh, when you hear it uh, all the time, is that, ooh, I was so lucky. I was so lucky. You know, in the world, world that's those that don't want to give credit to uh, God, that, that's what they say. I'm lucky. But those that know better say how well blessed I was to get out of that, how 
How blessed am I to get back on my feet? How blessed am I to be healed? Because they know that once the doctors have done all they can. Amen. And, and, and then it is it's no longer in the doctor's hand, but it's in God's hand. You recognize that's not love. That's right. It's, that's the movement of God. Yes. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Yes. So, you know, it, it kind of gets me uh, a little tea when I hear people on the news and they just got out of a crisis or uh, a severe uh, accident and walked away or walked out of a burning building or in, in the first thing they say is luck, but that's not love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, yes. that's, that's God willing his will in your life, meaning that you're blessed. You're blessed because it, it, it wasn't the fireman. It wasn't, it wasn't in it. It was God leading you out of a crisis, serious situation. Or getting you through a serious situation, and yes. so yeah, yes, and and it and it it segues into part of part of part of that is now in this new phase because you can't come out of something like that and be the same. You just you can't, yes. right? Right. And, and 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 at that point now. What's your mission in life? Because now you have a story to tell. And if you're bold enough to tell the true story, <laughs> yeah. now you're in a position where, you know, like like you were saying, we we were not, we're not Christ, we're not Jesus, but we're ambassadors. And as ambassadors, it's those stories, it's those encounters, it's those things that we have the privilege to get to the other side with that become the testimony by which others can see the hand of God. How you came out of sitting under that fig tree, as you were saying, Pastor, you know, uh, uh, a fire, a car accident, financial woes, you know, health issues, you know, condemnation. There's so many things that that fig tree would, us sitting up underneath would represent, right? But you ask that question of us and you pose that to, to us where you said, what are you doing with your mission? So I put that out there right now as we're talking that for those that are listening to this message right now, this, this, this recap of the message, what are you doing with your missions? And just to stop and think about what Minister Knox just said, you know, we all have an encounter where, but by the grace of God, we got through. But by the grace of God, not what did you say, brother? It wasn't. Oh, I was so lucky. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I was so lucky. Mm -hmm. So even if we, even if we said, everybody stop and think about. It. Have you ever said, "Oh, I was lucky." Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. And just to change that to but by the grace of God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's the truth. Right? Really is. Really is. You know, you do as you uh, catch yourself and you want to say, you know, and I, 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 um, I roll dices in games, uh, legal games. <laughs> with the kids and I, you take those dice and you lay them down on, on, on that board mm -hmm. that, that's love because you're trying mm -hmm. to get a number certain mm -hmm. numbers that's love mm -hmm. but, but our life is not lucky it's, it's, it's a blessing through our, our Lord and our Savior the, the, and, the, and the things that he has done and will do and have done mm -hmm. in our lives and situation that's God that's God 
And it has nothing to do, see, we get caught up on uh, believers and non-believers. You know, blessings fall down on those that believe and, and don't believe. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, yeah, we have to acknowledge those things which we know that are out of our control and out of the people around us control, and you have to give God the credit. Yes. 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 That is so, that is so true. We have to give God the credit. And so, Pastor, I want to talk a little bit about this. Now, you know, the word talks about God being a jealous God, too, now. He, he don't like other people to get all of this glory and credit for. But what does that mean? That he, how, how could he, being who he is, also have a bit of a jealous side? <laughs> Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it uh, it goes back to the Ten Commandments, <clears throat> and back in the Book of Exodus, somewhere around chapter twenty, and what God is telling the was telling the people then, and what God is telling us now <clears throat> is that we are not to have other gods before Him, uh, mm -hmm. false gods, little idols, uh, handmade gods that can't do anything. Uh, which is which I find interesting anyway. I mean, how can you worship something that you pick up by hand and take from one place to the other? I I I I, I, um, I have I have a a lack of understanding when I think about that. If I had to pick it up and move it from one place to the other, if it was all powerful, I wouldn't have to pick it up and move it. It would pick it would move itself. If it, if, it, if it were powerful, I wouldn't, I, I just have a, I don't know if, I can't wrap my mind around it, um, but that's what God was talking about, the little idol. And then people say, well, you know, I don't have one of those idols you're talking about, the little Buddhas or whatever you want to call them. Uh, I don't have an idol. But then um, I would challenge you to look deeply into your life because whatever you spend most of your time in or with is actually your idol. If you give more time to whatever it may be, it can be a car, it could be uh, jewelry, it could be anything, it could be a person. If you give whatever that is or whoever that is more time than you give God, then you put something or someone in the place of God. And that's what God is talking about. God is the one who created us. God is the one who gives us breath, life, his spirit. So for us to go and put someone or something else above God, yeah, he's jealous of that because he's the one who made you and made us. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, that's true. That's true. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. My doorbell was ringing. No but yes, yeah, so it 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 is very it's it's interesting to see the to see that you know you can't just do anything and not have some consequences even with it being God, mm -hmm. and that you know how would we feel? You know, did all of this <laughs> made it possible? And the person that's gone off like you don't even exist could care less. Give give a shout out, you know, to the next person and hadn't even looked back at any of the things. So we can't arbitrarily put God on the side and only pick him up when we need when we need him. Mm -hmm. Got to continue to build that relationship. Uh, throughout because he knows everything about it. just like he said to Nathaniel I saw you just like he said to Simon I'm, I looked on the inner mm -hmm. part of you the very soul the very intimate part of who you are so we can't hide anything mm -hmm. that part that part you know, we can hide from every, we can hide from human beings, 
you know. All the time. And and it happens. You're right. It happens all the time, right? Mm -hmm. All the time. But you can't hide anything from God. And yet mm -hmm. we try. It happens all the time, which is part of why a lot of people are despondent to going to church mm -hmm. and being a part. However, we do need to talk about that because just because what you see might be a hot mess does not mean that you let that keep you from having the relationship you should have with God. True. Right? So, True. so talk a little bit about you know, about about that. I know we're moving away just a little bit, but I think that's an, an important piece considering all of what we're seeing yet again in the uh -huh. news and all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, people get hurt in church and they uh, uh, instantly um, leave and never go uh, and that's our concerns at Pastor. And I'll let Pastor talk on that after me. Is that's a big concern for pastors. We're okay with you leaving the church because you don't want to be in our congregation. Fine, go find a church, Bible-based church, and get back involved, and not just not go to church. See, that's the issue we have: is you just not going to church no more, and 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 the more you're not there. The father, you have a chance of getting farther and farther away from what God initially had for your life and for, for you. Uh, and so it just it, it disturbs us when uh, so-called Christians call themselves Christians, but they don't go to a body of any kind. And, and, and especially uh, biblical uh, teaching uh, bodies in in in. They have so much negativity in them. Uh, it just, it's hard to break through and it's hard to get through. And they're so hurt that the very moment you say church, the very moment you say pastor, the very moment you say the Bible, oh, they just, some terrible words come out their mouth because they're so hurt. But they allow one instant, not many, that's a different, I didn't lie. They, they have a bunch of incidents that happen to get them to that point, but all it takes is one to fall out with the church. And Pastor, I know, I know you. Well, you know, I, I uh, there, are, there are a couple of things I can say about that. And one is, um, I think people look for the church to be perfect. Uh, and there's no such down. Uh, the church is made up of people. And people are flawed. So, and that's not to make an excuse for it, because in the church, we should never hurt any, we should never... Um, determinedly hurt anyone. But um, as Minister Knox said, when you get hurt, don't give up on God because it's not God's intention for you to be hurt. Um, it, and if you need to um, try another church, then do that. But don't, don't cast God to the side because of what flawed human beings do. I'll put it that way. Uh, so, you know, uh, just uh, God has has always been and always will be looking for a relationship with us. And as Brother Knox said, if, if you're in a church and, and it doesn't, it's not your fit, then try some else, try another church. Um, because I, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that there will be a church that you will go to that will be a better fit for you. And, and so uh, the main thing I would say is just don't give up on God. That That's the main thing that I would say. Uh, God is still God. 
Uh, and if you are in a place and it, it's not, I tell my children this all the time, wherever you go, I, it doesn't matter. And I've never asked them to come to the church where I'm the pastor. Uh, I tell them, wherever you, my children, grandchildren, wherever you go, just make sure that they are teaching the word of God. That's the main thing, not um, not that you have to be where I am. Uh, matter of fact, my my probably be better for my kids and my grandkids not to be where I am because I probably will say some things that they don't <laughs> like, <laughs> and then they gotta come home, uh, be back in my presence and deal with this. So, uh, but yeah, you know, don't allow people to hurt you to the point that you turn your back on God. I'll just leave it like that. <clears throat> and I think that's that's the part. A relationship with God should be able to weather what a person does because that person is flawed. God is not. And just because, you know, it may have been, you know, someone at the church that hurt your feelings or said something or, you know, you saw them living a lifestyle that was not, you know, according to the word. Those are those are sins that that person will have to answer for individually. But and if you haven't all go to them, you know, you, you yeah. have that right to share that you have the right to go before you know someone as a mediator to to try to resolve that if not like you said go find you a church home that will nurture you but and keep you in a right relationship with God because all it takes right now is for you to be to become weaker spiritually and allow Satan just one little toe in. And his job is to create all kinds of chaos, all kinds of havoc, all kinds of mess, you know, and all he needs is once he realizes that your relationship has, has suffered, not that it's bad, it's just suffering, like anything. For instance, Ladies, y'all know how we are. When we together, we are good. We so good, sister this, sister that, love my sister. Woo, we tight. Let one of us say something, do something. The rumor comes around. You found out that so-and-so said something about you to sister over here and it was supposed to be a secret, and now all of a sudden, all oh, breaks loose. <laughs> then you can't stand the sight of the girl that you said was your sister last week. <laughs> you, you ready to walk away from everything, walk away from everybody, and then you want everybody to walk away with you because they can't be friends with her because if they're friends with you, they can't be friends with her. That's a mess. And whatever your art was with that person, then you need to work that out with that person and keep everybody else out of it. That's how it gets messy. Yes, messy. We got to stop that. Because everything that we need to know how to, how to, how to work through, and I, I say it just like, it is a work through when someone has disappointed you. Because that's what that is. It's a, it's a disappointment. It's a hurt. But it's not that it can't be over, can't overcame. It's just that are you willing to put the work in? Mm. Mm -mm. Yep. And what we have to remember, too, it's, it's, it's unfortunate, but it's a reality. Uh, the devil shows up in church so like he shows up every place else. Yeah. Pastor. Oof. And he doesn't come in meekly and humbly. He comes in boldly. Um, 
how can I say that? Well, I, I, I can go to the book of Job and the Bible itself tells me that one day God was having a meeting with, with the angels and Satan walked up in there and God said to him, where are you coming from? Mm -hmm. And he says, I'm coming. I've been going to and fro from one place to the other. Let me just make it plain. I've been going from one place to the other, trying to find out who I can infiltrate. Mm. Who I can get, whose mind I can warp, whose mind I can twist, whose tongue I can make say what I want it to say, whose mind I want to think the way I want it to think, who I can plant doubt in. Uh, that's where I came from. And so the Bible itself lets us know that if God, if he walked up, if, the, if Satan, if the devil walked up into the very presence mm. of God mm. and spoke boldly about what he was doing, how can we not think and understand that he's going to try to come not only in the church, but into each right. one of us? Matter of fact, we individually are the church. Right. So if you're not careful, you might be the transporter of the devil into the truth. My Lord. Mm. Woo. Now that's not something I want to be uh, responsible. I don't want to transport anything that allows him to have any say. But that's deep. Yeah. Because but that's, that's true. true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mad at your sister, mad at your brother. Mm -hmm. You come, y'all dressed up, and come to church, and there you are, the preachers preaching the word, and you looking across on the other side, angry. Angry. Upset. Angry. Yeah. Can't even can't even hear the word. Right. Yep. 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 And he's got Not victory. He's got victory right in that. Because that's what he wanted from the very beginning. Yes. To distort the word. Yes. Yes. Distort the word. Keep you from hearing the word. That could be the word that would deliver you from the way you were feeling. But now you leave having not got fed. Only to find yourself in a worse situation. Carrying all of that. Just continuing yeah. the mess. Mm. And, and, it, yes. it's, and it, isn't it interesting how the devil he does that? Mm -hmm. You come in and you were angry when you came in the church. Could have been a, your, your, your significant other that said something to tick you off. And heaven forbid if, you, if the significant other said something to you and both of you drove to church together in the car. Mm. Because the That's devil sits there and what he says God. is, look at him or her. Mm -hmm. do, you, do, you, do you remember what they said to you? Look at how they're looking at you. <laughs> Can't you just, don't you just want to curse them out? Don't you want to just tell them what's on your mind? Or you mentioned the fact of, a, of another sister or another brother, same thing. Uh, Look at him sitting over there. Thank you all that. Yeah. You better than he is anyway. Yeah. That's the way the devil works. That's the way the devil gets our mind off of what God is trying to give us onto mm -hmm. what he's trying to plant in our hearts. Mm -hmm. And he does a good job of it. Mm. An excellent job of it. Yes. Yes. Now, now we've given that scenario Let's give them the scenario. Okay, so you find yourself a little upset. You find yourself coming into church and you're just not in the correct posture you need to be in. What are some solutions that can happen there so you don't leave that same way with what you were feeling coming in? Yeah, uh, what? Several things. One, 
uh, take the time to stop before you enter the house of prayer and pray. Pray for uh, resolution. Pray for understanding. Pray for forgiveness. Pray for peace. Pray for, pray for those things that are uh, or obstacles in your way to be removed so that your heart and your mind can be open. The other thing is that uh, listen to a song that brings you to a worshipful, worshipful time and spirit. Listen to that before you walk in. Uh, 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 have someone you can call. I, I don't know, you know, because on a Sunday morning, pastor is kind of busy, but have someone you can call and, and take five minutes to get yourself uh, together in, your, in the right frame of mind. Don't just enter the house of prayer and expecting it to change or happening because you walked into the house of prayer. You walk in angry, guess what? You're going to sit down angry. You're going to listen to everything angry. You're going to hear everything through an angry spirit. But if you do some of those things I just mentioned, at least you bring yourself to a point that you're open and you're listening for God. And ask God. Good. If you don't have anybody you can go to, ask God. Lord, my mind is all jacked up right now. <laughs> I, 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 I'm focusing on the wrong thing. I need you, through the power of your Holy Spirit, to change me, to give me. I, I need to hear from you today, Lord. I, you are the only one who can help me mm -hmm. get through this situation. You're the one that can change my perspective on things. So I need you to help me get above this that I'm going through. Mm -hmm. Give me a word. Let it come. Let it come through prayer. Let it come through a song. Let it come through the message. But I need you, Lord, to help me right now. And, and I assure you, God will help you. Yes. He will take your mind and, and yes. take it to another level. He will put, help you to get your mind where it needs to be instead of where it is. Yes. So yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, those are those are all excellent um opportunities to show God's power and his authority in your life to overcome something that's real. And you know, and 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 that's what I love about us talking here on Unconstructed Bible Talk is that it's not about, you know, oh holier than thou. <laughs> Yeah. conversation is real conversation is real the realness of this christian law and being able to put practical thoughts and practical actions you know before us so that we do know how to self-correct and um understand the relationship that we should have and that we're working towards with god and how in that is the power that we need and the authority through him to be able to look at a difficult situation yeah. and, and know that you can overcome that and, and know that you can get beyond that and, that and not carry it around for days and weeks and years, you know, until it festers right. within us. Um, but uh the 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 message sunday his name is jesus um you brought it from uh the first chapter of john the 35th through the uh through the 50th uh verse 51 verse um where we were just speaking from tonight and so i just encourage those to go back and listen to the message on sunday um, you know, as well as it, it's on YouTube, um, as well as on Facebook, take notes. This is really critical. It's so much good information that you share with us on Sundays. Um, I know, and it could be, it could be that I'm so young, <laughs> it's hard to, it's hard to retain all of that. 
without taking some notes and then to come back and spend some time with that notes so that it's personalized um, for you individually. So, so you can glean from it what your message is, what your takeaway is, how it's going to affect your life and how you're, how you're able to apply it, you know, daily, because we don't want to just be sitting here talking. We really want the information to shed light. Right, Pastor? Yeah. And, 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 and uh, to take it even further, uh, take notes, but then go back and read the passage for yourself. And 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 here's what I tell folk in in Bible study, especially, <clears throat> don't just read it as it being somebody else. Read yourself within that passage. What does that passage personally say to you? Where would you find yourself in that passage? And the passage Sunday is a very good one. Would you be Nathaniel sitting under that tree? Or would you be Peter, whose name Jesus has changed? Or would you be Philip, the one who's trying to bring somebody to Christ? Or would you be Andrew trying to bring a relative to Christ? Where would you be in that story? How does that story affect you? If you put yourself in that story, how would it change the dynamics of that story for you and your personal life? We often read it and we leave it as being, oh, that happened to Peter, that happened to James, that happened to John. How, how, how are you in that story? Where are you in that story? What is God saying to you personally through that passage of Scripture? Uh, and, and, and so, uh, yeah, make it personal. That's what God wants in the relationship with each one of us. And the best way to have that relationship is to allow God to speak through his word to each and every one of us. So yes. that was it. And, yes. and, and, and you mentioned, we were talking about um, if you come in the wrong, you know, if you come in and something has upset you. and it did, That's a, that, another reason to go to church is to develop a fellowship with somebody. Brother Knox said to pray. Well, you may need to have somebody that you can go to, and you don't have to necessarily tell them everything that's been. Child, me and my husband or me and my wife got into a big argument, and da 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 da. No, you don't have to spill all that to them. Just ask them, look, my mind right now is going in a lot of different. Can you pray with me? Yeah. That, that alone begins to help you. And you don't have to divulge everything to them. Because normally if you divulge everything to them, especially, well, I won't say especially, but let's just use a woman for talking to another woman. Child, he said so and so. Well, I told you he wasn't no good in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> so don't go there. <laughs> Let God work through them in that prayer and bring you out of what you in. <laughs> Amen. 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 That is a good, that is a good point. I love what you just said. Reading that scripture to just it, imagine, imagine yourself as one of the characters that's being depicted within that particular passage and see how it fits and see what you'll learn about yourself, you know, in that. That's that's excellent, excellent, excellent. Minister Knox, do you have any uh, words of wisdom or nuggets this evening that you'd like to, to share as we get prepared to close out? No, no nuggets. Uh, just uh, remember the title. Uh, his name is Jesus. Call upon him. Regardless of what it is or where you are or what it is you're going through, if you use the name of Jesus, he will he will answer. He will show up. Might not like what he said, might not like how he does it, but he will show up 
And, and, and if you ask for, um, and that's why I like to end uh, the benediction at church every day, that he is the pilot and not the co-pilot. Too many times we are pushing him to the side and making him the co-pilot of our life. Make him the pilot. And if you make him the pilot of your life, he will lead you, he will guide you, and he will direct you in the right direction. Amen. Amen. And Pastor? Final I can thoughts. say it better myself. Uh, his name is Jesus. If you stand in the need of healing, his name is Jesus. If you stand in the need of forgiveness, his name is Jesus. If you stand in the need of salvation, his name is Jesus. If you stand in the need of standing in me, his name is Jesus. And he has all power, not some, Amen. not limited, but he has all power, not just in heaven, but on earth, in his hand. And he can do what nobody else can. And as Brother Knox said, it may not be exactly like we want it to be. It may not happen when we want it to happen. But ultimately, uh, as I like the way Kurt Franklin, Franklin says it in the song that uh, um, um, that we talked about a uh, week before last, where Rance Allen was singing, there's something about that name. Kurt in that says, at the name of Jesus, every knee will have to bow. At the name of Jesus, every tongue will have to confess. So at some point, every knee is going to have to bow and every tongue is going to have to confess. So you might as well get to know the name and his name is Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for joining us this evening here on Constructed Bible Talk. And, of course, we always like to share how you can connect with us at Rivertown, um, whether it is for our Bible study on Wednesday evenings with, um, with our pastor um, at 6.30 to 7.30, or here on Tuesday evenings at 7.30, Unconstructed Bible Talk. And, of course, we would love to have you in person on Sundays at noon. Our service starts at noon. We are very efficient. We will not have you there all day. Pastor brings a wonderful word. Minister Knox brings a wonderful word. But you don't, you won't have to give up too much of your time, but just to come and share and partake, you know, with us and have great fellowship. Um, Minister Knox, you want to share how they can get in contact if they need a prayer request and or just any additional information? Uh, yes, uh, we do have a virtual number, 681-533-0236. And uh, you can call that and follow the prompts, leave your name, your number. Uh, if no one picks up, Definitely leave your name and number in case no one picks up and so that you can be called back and leave a short message uh, explaining who you are and what you need. And so that uh, pastor will follow it up and uh, respond to your call. Uh, also, um, you can uh, leave comments on our Tuesday night forum, leave comments uh, on our Facebook on Sunday pastor sees those uh, and we will respond. Amen. Amen. And as I'll, always, we leave you with the fact that we love you and there's absolutely nothing that you can do about that. Be blessed, everyone. Be blessed. Good night. Have a great week. Stay warm. Woo, exactly. Yes. <laughs>